Okay, you know, today's Shabbos, so we're going to do two days as usual, 13 and 14. By the way, there will not be a class on Sunday. I have an early bris to go to, Amir Tzashem. And so on Sunday, we'll do a similar. We'll pick up Sunday. Uh, we'll pick up on Monday. We'll pick up Sunday and Monday. Okay, got it? Do I get it? Yeah. Okay, 13 Sivan. The Tzemat said it composed many melodies. He studied Torah aloud. As we've learned that you're not Yoisi, you're not, you don't fulfill the mitzvah of Talmud Torah until you bring the words mamish to your mouth and speak them. He studied Torah aloud and with song. He had a nigan as he learned. Sometimes he would interrupt his studies or his writing to siddhas or response and just sing the melody. Now, this is interesting. The last time my grandfather, right, the Rebbe Maharaj, uh, son of the, of the, one of the sons of the Tzema Tzedek, related that from the sound of the Tzema Tzedek's melody, he could tell in what subject he was then occupied. Pretty interesting. All right, let's see, let's see. Okay. So lessons in Tanya. We're in the middle of this parak here. Uh, lessons in Tanya, page 862. And in the uh, classical Tanya, Lakuti Amorim, uh, page I and Tess. All right. Um, Let's see how we the running start on this thing. Oh yeah, yesterday we were speaking about Hashem's Mida Habgadula, his greatness, which is the name that the Kabbalists applied to his attribute of kindness. And uh, the expression is just as he is Ein Sov, just as he is without limit, so his Midos are also without limit. So Chesed flows infinitely. And now he brings another side. There's every mida is infinite. Now that's, in my mind anyway, well, I don't know about you, in your mind, kind of easier to understand about chesed, because chesed is, it's de by definition, is flow, easier to understand than gavura, which is restraint, which, at least in my mind, uh, is the opposite of limit limitless. It's this faculty of limitation. So this is where we're going to go today. The Mida Gevura is also one of the Ein Sof Midos. In the Kamesha, Mida Zu, just as this Mida of Chesed is a Mida of Hashem alone, in other words, that his kindness can be infinite, unlike everything that is in the realm of creation, the creation by definition is some conscription of limitation. Hashem's meat of kindness is infinite. So just like this meter is one of the praises and uniquenesses of Hashem, shum nivra, because it's not in the ability of ever any created being, livra yeshma ayin, to create something from nothing, and to enliven it. Everything in creation who has a creative capability creates something from something. But Hashem creates something from so-called nothing, from no tangible state to a state of tangible state, to from nothing that exists in any manner that we can call real existence, He creates real existence. Unlike anything else in creation or any entity else in creation. And though this is a fact, understanding this fact is not within the realm of any creature to grasp it. Because it's not within the power of any created intellect or the intellect of any created, created being to grasp with one's mind and to understand this mida, the echolta, and this ability that Hashem has, libra yesh to create 
something from nothing. And to enliven. Because why? Because Abriya Yeshma Ayim who Because creating something from nothing, excuse me, is above or beyond the capacity of the intellect of any creature. It's amongst the midos, the measures, the attributes of Hashem. As we say that this notion of infinity isn't just that it goes on and on forever. This is a kind, an infinity that we have no ability to grasp how it works, which is the kind of infinity which is able to take that which is nothing, that which is has no mamushes, no no tangibility at all, even at the, you know, we look in our world. We, we get down to very small things. We talked about solutions, sugar in solution, subatomic particles. But as far as we go as go, with our greatest microscopes that we have, we're still going to reach a something, even if the something is a subatomic particle. And maybe there'll be sub subatomic particles. We don't know. When I grew up as a kid, there, were, there weren't subatomic particles, they were just atoms. And we knew about electrons and neutrons and protons. And only later did we start to see with more technology subatomic. So it's possible we're going to see sub subatomic. But all that's in the realm of stuff. Hashem is, is, it takes a realm which is completely non stuff at all and creates stuff from it. So that's uh, you know, a way of thinking about the, age, the stuff that comes from iron. So this is for, amongst Hashem's, uh, the meters of Hashem's greatness. It's just an, it's not that he's big, but he has this unique capability. And in Another aspect of Hashem's midos, besides what we just said, is that the Holy One and His midos are in a complete state of simple unity. So when our brain informs our heart and we express a mida, that mida is no longer in the brain. And that mida, by the way, that in the brain originated from someplace deeper and it's no longer there. It's, it's being expressed. When I do an act of kindness, it's on the outside, right? In fact, you know I'm kind. Hope you've, hopefully I am kind. We're all kind. Only by the acts that we do. And the acts are external to us. With Hashem, His Mida, in particular, is still focusing on the Mida of Chesed, are in a state of actus pasha. They're in a state of simple unity with Him. So no matter where they're being expressed, whether it's in the world of Atsilas or it's down here, in an act of kindness that a Jew does as a motivation in response to the motivation of his, of his, his or her godly soul, it's still connected with the unity and the simple unity, the depth of depth of depth, the essence of Hashem. But the Yisab Zohar Kodesh as is brought in the Holy Zohar, the Zohar says, the Ihu he and his vessels are one. By the way, I'm in the language I'm using right now, he and his expressions are one though they are expressions of him, or let's say in Atzilus, the word is emanations. Though they are etzel, natzil, emanated from him, they're always one with him. And it's just as, just as it's without, it's, it's not within the ability of any created intellect, shum seichel nivra, the hasig boire, to grasp, understand one's creator, so, similarly, we cannot understand these kinds of midos. And now we'll move to the more problematic one, if you will, which is Gevura. But just as it's not within, not within our ability to understand of any, any, any created intellect to grasp the midam is Gedula, his chesed, shehiya cheles levirayeshna ayin which is the ability, he's recapitulating chesed, the ability to bring into something into existence, something from nothing. And to enliven it, as it's written in Tilim, it says he built the world with kindness. Plain meaning, of course, it was a kind thing that he did. But more, intrin more depth, more intrinsic to the meaning, which is, the, which is what the whole purpose of Kabbalah and Hasidus is, is to get to the and the sod of the meaning ultimately is that 
We'll take it literally. Oilam chesed yabanam. The world, kindness built. Kindness builds the world. The mida of kindness. It says an expression. And it's extrusion. So it's ka. So it just says it's impossible to grasp what that's all about. So kach mamish em yechelte lahasig midas gevrosa shalakoris borho. In the same way, it's impossible to understand and grasp the attribute of his gevora. Shehim midas at simsum. And in fact, as I said earlier, this is one is even harder to understand. Because if Hashem is infinite, how does his, where comes the ability to create finite? If Hashem is by definition limited, limitless, ain't so, where comes the capability to become self, to limit himself and can circumscribe himself in subatomic particles. So that's the Mita Gavura. I mean, we'll just start with this. This, this is the Mita Gavura to contract. <clears throat> Where does that come from? Shahi Mita Sat Simsum, as he says, that's the Mita of contraction. Umaniya Sahaspashtas, and holding back the Hispashtas, holding back the flow. Migurul uh, Asai. Uh, the, holding back the flow that comes from his greatness, holding back that flow uh, that comes to all the creatures. Remember the marshal of the sun, if the sun were to, to be here, the way it is there, unlimited, un, uh, unbridled, and not somewhat uh, uh, softened by, as we spoke about before in the physical plane, the ozone layer, we would burn up. So he, he has this Mita Gavura, which is Mita Gavura is a restraining capability, which restrains the highest, which restrains the highest of vitality from coming down and being revealed to the creatures, to, to enliven them and keep them in existence in a revealed way. Right? It's not revealed. If it, again, if it were revealed, it would, if it, we would burn up. So there has to be the union of Timsu. And we call this Hestoponim, concealment of the face. And as we've mentioned many times, Ponim means panemius, same word. The inner dimension of Hashem, the internality, the deep internality of Hashem, which is infinite, has to have some quality of restraint capability within it in order to create a creation. This is called hestupanim, the concealment of the face. This is the attribute of Gevorah. In order that the life force itself is concealed in the body of the created thing. I know I'm alive, but I can't touch my life force. If I, if I touch my, the life force, the life force is a godly, infinite, an infinite godly power, and my individuality, my separateness would disappear. So it's concealed. The highest, the vitality, the life force itself is concealed within the body of a creature. And it's as if the body of the created thing is a thing on itself. And it's not like the ray of the sun from the sun. The ray of the sun, we know it's connected with the sun. We see, we call it sunshine, right? It's very clear to us that the ray of the sun, which is enlivening the vegetative kingdom, et cetera, et cetera, is coming from the sun. But we perceive ourselves as something separate, not connected with Hashem. That's his me, and I'm just circumscribed by being about five foot 10 and certain weight, et cetera, for a volume. And that volume is me, the me, which is separate from the you, which has its own volume, or own mass. So we perceive ourselves as something separate. So even though in truth, there is nothing separate from Hashem. Really, everything is like the hispashis, the flow of life from the sun. right? But that's not revealed. And that's what we call hestupanim, the concealment of the eponym, of the inner truth. So what do we call, after all is said and done, these are what we call 
the Gavuras, the opposite of Chesed, the Gavura of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Asher Kol Yochel, he's able to do anything, everything. Now in this, um, this quote from you, almost, almost quote from you, one of the, uh, there's a, 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 a work in Kabbalah Chassidus called Mishnas of Chassidim. Mishnas of Chassidim. Mishnas of like Mishnayas, but the teachings of Chassidim. And uh, in that book, uh, he says the following. I'll just translate in English. Just as Hashem has the power of limitlessness, he also has the power of limitedness. And that's what he says. And the reason being, if he didn't have the power of limitedness, he would be limited, right? He wouldn't have the power to limit himself. So Hashem is kol yochel. That's the words on the page. Kol yochel. He's capable of everything. He's capable of being both limitless and limited. He's capable, with samsim achayis v'haroknis, he's capable of, of contracting the life force and the spirituality of things, Anishba Mimidas Piv, which flows from his mouth, right? That's the, the metaphor for creation. For the Hastira and conceal it. Shiloli Batal Gufa Nivramatsius, in order that the body of created entities should not become nullified in their existence. Now he says, and <laughs> this is something I've underlined. And this is not within the capability of any intellect, created intellect, to grasp how it is that Hashem can be both limited and limitless. Limited, get. It's, I mean, limitless is easy. He's Ein Sof. But we're not used to the idea that ain't, this Ein Sof is not an Ein Sof which goes on forever necessarily. It's an Ein Sof which can go on forever. But it has even more than that associated with it, which can stop going on forever as well. So that's uh, a paradox, right? And as I often say, wherever you find paradox, you'll find God. So because it's not within our, 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 our normative cycle to la ha sigma husa tzimtzum, to understand how this tzimtzum contraction and hester and this concealment can be part of a, of a being who's by definition ain't so without limit. So it's not within our grasp to understand this essence of Tzimtzum and Hester, and at the same time, at the same time, we're constantly coming into being from nothing to something, right? That power that God has to create nothing from, something from nothing. Just as it is outside of the domain of or impossible for any created intellect, as it's impossible for a created intellect to understand creation from nothing to something. This is all, this is tomorrow, uh, Shabbos, and it's a, a bracket, largely a bracket, but so listen to this. Pay attention. That's what he's telling us to do. This quality, which we call contraction, simsum, or and concealment of the life force, nikra b'shem kalim. That's what we call in the language of Hasidus kalim, vessels. We'll explain this in a minute. The achayis atzma in the life force itself is nikra b'shem or is called light. So this is, I mean, fundamental. I think. Some of us, most of us have touched this, but if you haven't, everything that exists in creation is a combination of energy and a container, right? If you look down here below, I mean, look, look at our cells. We have soul energy without which we couldn't exist, but at the same time, we have corporeal reality, the substance of our body, the cellular structures and all the fiber and stuff. Nerves itself is an example of this. It's a electrical impulse, that's the ore, that's the light, but it has to be contained in a particular fiber. Look at the electricity in your house, right? The energy is the electricity, the wire and the resistors and the capacitors and all those other things which, which have to do with uh, limiting, fashioning, shaping the light, 
are called the vessels. So the whole of everything is always a combination of light, energetic, energy, and a vessel and a container to contain it. Otherwise, that light would just be dissipated and of no use. So, so just to repeat this again in the bracket. That, that container, right? The container, see my hand, I'm, I'm fetching it. I'm bringing it tight together. I want it to hold something. Uh, we can use the muscle of water in a vessel. It's wonderful if there's water, but it's not too useful if you don't have a vessel to carry it to your plate, into your, into your house, or deliver it into your faucet. So the Bechin of Tzimtzum, which that's the faucet, that's the vessel, and all those other things I mentioned, and that's concealing, right? It's covering over the light. Bechin of Tzimtzum, Vahester Rechayas, and Nikon of Hashem Kalim, which we call vessels, and the Chayas is called light. Just as a vessel conceals that which is within it. So so similarly, the attribute of Hashem to limit things, his capability to limit things, which is called Simpson, is mechaser umaser ha'or It it covers over, conceals the light and the light force which is flowing within it. That's it. The hakelim heim ha'oisius. And the vessels are the letters. To shorten you, what do you mean the letters? Let me think, okay, think about the, I have thought, but I need to express it. I need to, I want to. God has a thought. He has a will to create. So, but in order to create, he has to bring forth a power that he has to shape that will into something that can have the, at least the experience of being separated from him. Though nothing is separated from him, if he's going to make a creation, of myriad multiple multiple multiplicities of, of, of endless multiplicities of things, they have to have boundedness. So the boundedness starts, where does it start? I take my thought and I express it in letters. That's the beginning of words, the beginning of speech. So the kalim, hein hena oisius, the kalim are the letters. To shorshon of the hei oisius, uh, hey oisius there's, there are root of all the letters is from five letters, five articulative powers of the mouth, which is the throat, the lips, the palate, the teeth, and the tongue. And that's called minatspa, each letter from a, sing, a different source in the mouth. It's called minatspa. One, two, three, four, five. Five articulative powers of the mouth. And these articulative powers of the mouth are what we call the hay gavoras the five ways of constricting, contracting. Which in speech, what do those powers do? They divide and separate the breath. So in the analogy, the breath is the source of it all. Without, right? Without breath, there's no speech. Hashem's medulla, his light, his effusion, is the source of it all. But for the effusion to have a result that he wants, which is created entities, there has to be something which contracts that or shapes that effusion. And those are what we call the letters, the letters, the Hebrew letters. The hakoil, the hey moitsoi sepeh, and there has, so there has to be something which divides them and separates them. And the breath, the hakoil, the breath, from the, it goes into the hemotsoi sepeh, is shaped by the five articulated powers of the mouth, this havis kuf boiosius, but kuf beisosius, to bring into being 22 letters. The shorish he gavuras, and the source of these five gavuras, hu botsina de kadunita. This is an expression from the Zohar, is from the dark light. Botsina is light, the kadunita is dark. So this is a level of darkness, which is a light which is deeper than able to be radiated. Somewhat a marshal like that we have today is the black hole. Black hole in which is a concentration, a density, at least this is the way scientists explain it today, whether ultimately that will be the truth or not, but, but it's, it's good for us because it gives us a metaphor. The, the black hole is a condensation of light into such an extent that it becomes dark, sucked into a darkness. So this was uh, forecast in the Kabbalah, Butsina de Cardinitum, 
the dark, the, the light which is dark, black light. Shehi gavura iloh, which is a supernal gavura, the highest level of gavura. Right? Light is always a metaphor for the or you know for the energy which is going to come from Hashem. But as we said earlier, quoting from the Mishnah's Chassidim, at that very source, there's also the capability of darkness to 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 limit that light. The light and the and the and the ability to limit it come from way deep in the essence of Hashem Himself. And that place where that kind of limitation comes from is called in the language of Kabbalah, Gavura Allah, the Atik Yoimim. The supernal Gavuras, the supernal constraints of Atik Yoimim, which for today we'll just call it the, the inner dimension of the crown. And the crown has two parts, Arach Anpin, the low part, and Atik Yoimim, which is the deep part. So we're getting just let's, just, let's call this a really deep level, inching toward, if you could say such a thing, to Atmos, the essence of God Himself, and at that very deep level, is the source of the limitation, which is able to limit the unlimitation. The source of Hasadim, and he says, in fact, the source of Has the source, they're both together in this place. The short, this root of the Hasadim is Gamkem Chesed So you have Gavura of Atikyonim, Gavura of the of the of the close to the seminal point of everything, and you have chesed also in that same place. And they operate collective, in concert with each other to create the sense of effusion and the sense of limitation and the right balance of everything so that things can exist. That's through the gavura, the thingness, individuality of things. But their existence is owing to the chesed, which is the energetic of life force, which is in everything. As is known to those who know the Chain. Chain is an acronym for for Chachmas Nestorim. Chain. Ches Nun. Those who know the hidden, not the hidden wisdoms, know what we're talking about. And now we all know at least a little bit about what we're talking about. I hope. Well, that's this is a, a mouthful. To say the least, I would guess there would might be some questions. Don't let me force you. <laughs> Rabbi Kamen, I put some, I put a, a couple of comments in the chat. Do you, you don't tend to look at them while you're teaching because I don't want to interrupt I, I, you. But, no, I, I don't see that there's comments. I, I don't know if I can even do it on the phone. Can I? I anyway, yeah, I don't. I don't see. Them. Go ahead. Uh, well, first of all, I wanted to say that. Today is the first time I really understood what the Hey Gevuros were as connected to the Hey Motza So thank you. Thank you. And, well, I think the way you explain it. Okay. Uh, okay, good. Um, and then did you translate call as breath? Or was I? Well, not? coil is voice. Hevel oh. is breath. There's a word before. Hevel is breath. And hakol is the voice. So it's not the same thing. It's not no, one and the same. No, no, no. Think about that. To have a voice, that your breath empowers your voice. Right. I mean, you could that. By the way, I mean, it's interesting what you bring it up. The letter H hey is called a light letter. So the breath is, of course, it's known that the breath has a certain resonance to it, but that's only because of the fact that it's coming through something that can resonate. And that that end that stuff that's in your mouth, which causes some kind of sound, even the the light sound, is called the voice. That creates the voice from the from the breath. The other thing that I um, commented on about his limited and limitlessness, and how he can be both because he's not limited by anything, is um, from my newfound understanding of how Hashem experiences the physical world through us physical beings and we are limited so that's how the possible way that Hashem could experience yeah it's interesting right. right if if he weren't uh, if he didn't have the capacity of limitation you're saying maybe he couldn't relate to us limited creatures is that what you're saying no, I'm saying that the way he experiences he experiences it in a limited way because if he's experiencing it through human beings who die eventually, 
then I don't I don't know I don't know if that's true I don't know if he's experiencing it in a limited way it well, he's gives experiencing it, my life Hashem is walking with me through me in my absolutely. life absolutely and I'm limited yeah you're limited but he and therefore Hashem is experiencing through me limitation no not not exactly remember Hashem is experiencing you and that's that he's experiencing something limited but he's experiencing everything about you that you don't have and not even experience he's experiencing the total he's not only experiencing he's creating the hashaka protest that you haven't yet that is that's that's your future so he's experiencing more of you in a certain way yes but he's also experiencing me on all levels i mean i myself have a chaya nikhida that i that that knows more than i know but yep. I have I have multiple levels, so right. you have experienced me on multiple levels. I absolutely, not absolutely. I know. Um, the question that I have is, how do we um, generate more bracha, and how do we um, accomplish that there should be less hiddenness, less less, less Simpson, right? Yeah. How do we do that? Through learning about how to do that, which is learning ultimately. You know, yesterday we had a, an interesting, I thought a very rich and lively conversation about Gaula. And uh, this morning I was thinking about that, and this, is, this will be related to your question. Uh, I, I, thought, I thought of a line that when I think about that, I've, I've often said that, and it's true because I'm just repeating what the Rebbeim have said, that every, every word in Chassidus is a word which you can find a bechain for, right? No matter how abstract it is. And then you ask yourself, well, what's the bechain? And so, so what? So I can do this, I can do that. Why am I doing this and that? What's the whole point? Well, there's a line in the, I'm sure you all know this, in the Haggadah, that it says a person is to uh, to to, to he has to see himself going out of Egypt. Egypt, of course, is the original Gaula, the original Gaula. So number one, we're obligated to see ourselves that way and to position ourselves that way. All the days of your life. And the Chachamim say, there's two opinions on this. The Chachamim say, the days of your life isn't all of now. And the Chol Yimei Chayacha is Lahevi Yimei Samashiach, to bring the days of Mashiach. So the answer, the short answer to your question is Torah and mitzvos need to be done with the kavana that every single thing you learn and every, in Torah, obviously, and every single thing you do in mitzvahs is in order to bring the Gula. So how do we do that? Just by living it that way. Yeah, and I, I, it seems from what we're learning that there is much more spiritual effectiveness to our words of learning, whether it's learning Hasidus or learning the Parsha of the week. It's much more effective. The part, I think part of the hiddenness is that we keep on telling ourselves that our mitzvahs don't have much significance. Who's, who and tells you you, when we you, learned Hasidus, we learned the opposite, that they have a huge significance. I, I'm just a little bit blown away by the fact that we learned that our mitzvahs have no significance. Is that what's something you learned in school? You just or, keep on hearing that you're just a little person and um, like, what could you, you know, what could, I, could I think, you be already? You know, I have to say that I think that is one of the fundamental revolutions of Hasidus. Yeah. To teach us how much we matter, not only how much we matter, but how critical our avoida is in the in bringing about what Hashem wants to bring about, which is the gula. I mean, I think Hasidus really has made that. You know, when the uh, when the uh, when the Baal Shem Tov went up to Mashiach, and you all know this, and most people have heard this, maybe if you haven't, you hear it now when the when the when the Baal Shem Tov, founder of Hasidus, right, went up to Mashiach and asked him, "When will you come?" What did he answer him? When your wellsprings will go out to the outside. Yesterday we had an interesting conversation about 
uh, Geula Pratis and Geula Klalis, this the, the individual Geula and the and the, and the general Geula. And we spoke about at least both in the class and in the chat about how the where you begin is the personal Geula, and how do you begin? And then you bring it Lachutza. So the whole idea is the whole idea. The whole purpose of Torah and Mitzvahs is, is to is to bring out the Geula in ourselves, and then to take that and bring that out chutzah to the outside. And that's like the fundamental teaching of, of why we're learning Hasidus, so that we can do the same Torah and Mitzvahs that have been done for generations, for thousands of years, but with a significantly different attitude and emphasis on why we're doing it. Thank you. And I also it. appreciate that you mentioned that it's right there in the Haggadah, Lahavi Limos HaMashiach. Lahavi Limos HaMashiach, that's the whole purpose. It's, you know? I mean, I, right, but I'll tell you the truth. I mean, it's, I, I'm on fire about that now, <clears throat> and 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 am when I when I think about it because of the Hasidus that I've learned about this. Yeah. You know, you can pass that over and then just go right through the Haggadah. But yeah, yeah. Thank you. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. I guess. I mean, I'm happy to to if anyone else has anything to say, but I, I don't want to lose the thought. That one certainly this is now becomes a bechain, that everything we're learning here on this page, and the, and is meant to bring that. It's not yet so that we can become PhDs in Hasidus. It's here, Lahavi Yemesa Mashiach. And so, bechain, let it be that way. Anybody else want to add something here? I actually have just a little question. I may have missed oh. something you said. Um, I I get like caught up in this idea of the gvura of Hashem is his chesed, but mm -hmm. and that and that's why we could exist because of his limiting his life. But it's the gvura that actually makes us suffer so much. I guess that's the Hester Panim. I so, say that what, it's the gvura that makes us what? It's the gvura that makes us, makes things difficult in our life. Any that's suffering an, well, in the yeah, world. Yeah, is yeah, yeah, that's another aspect of the not world. Chesed. Correct. It's not, it's, it's chesed, it's not revealed chesed, that's for sure. Right. So how, how do we reconcile that? How's the Gvura both good and hard? So that's a beautiful mime from the, from the Rebbe, somewhere in the Mems about nisyonis, afflictions, problems. And I'll tell you something that I really did not get until very recently when I caused that, that mimer. Now, the word nisoyan, difficulty, which is a gavor, right? Gavor, it's, it's difficult. And everything is in a sense of constraint, right? And I'm not... I'm not breathing it, you know, relaxed. It's tough, tough going. So the word nisoyan is the same, and I mentioned this before, is the same root letters as lift up, nun sama, to lift up. Now, this is a tough message, but it's a message that I finally got because of what he said in this mimer. I mean, it's easy to say, Hashem, everything... It's an, it's it's teva hatev lahetiv. We say about God. It's the nature of God to do good. Oh yeah. So what's all this negative stuff? So the mimer tells us, and it's not the only mimer. It tells us the whole purpose of the nisoyin is to bring you to a higher place. And he says in this mimer that that which I just which I just said that the purpose of the nisoyin is to elevate you, to bring you to a higher, deeper level of understanding. That can only be understood by going through the Nisoyim. It's not something that makes sense, I'll be safely. And that I can relate to. And it wasn't until a, um, a few years ago when I went through an experience, a tremendous physical Nisoyim, and I wound up coming out of that resonating with what it says in the Maimur, that had I not had that experience, I would not have the sense, the depth of sense of, of, of presence of God that I have after that experience. 
And that's Olam Chasid Yabon. Olam itself is the word for hell. Olam. Ayin Lamed Mem. Chesed. Olam Chesed, this concealment is how he builds a path to ultimately feeling and experiencing a deeper chesed. And I'll just end with one other thing. This, this idea was echoed by the Frida Gerebe in the English uh, biography, I don't remember, Prince in Darkness or something like that, um, in which the Frida Gerebe said that all the pain and suffering and the beatings and the torture that I got in prison, which of course resulted in what we know, you know, in his paralysis and inability to speak, et cetera, et cetera. He said, I would never wish them on anybody else, but I would never let go of them either. So coming to a place of experiencing a nisyoinus, bring you an elevation, is something we don't wish on anybody and so ourselves, but it ultimately, if you have it, you'll be able to see that it's a kindness. Tough. <laughs> yeah. Tough, huh? All right. It ain't easy. Thank you. That's for sure. You for <laughs> okay. A good Shabbos, and to, we'll see each other on Monday, Sushan. Okay? No class. Thank Sunday. you, good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Shabbos.